Where who are you? Who 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 who? <laughs> Most of us know that song by the Who. <laughs> What's the name of the band? The Who? With led by uh, Pete Townsend, and Pete Townsend was probably the reason why I picked up the guitar in the first place when I was 11 years old. That's about four, over 40 years ago. Uh, thanks, Pete, if you, if you ever see this video. Um, Pete Townsend was, became a follower of this guru named Mayor Baba back in the 60s. Mayor Baba is not very well known now, uh, but back then he was one of the, the bigger gurus on the scene. Um, he had he had been uh, talked about in this book, among other things, you know, not that this made him famous or not, but if you ever get a, a chance to read a book called uh, A Search in Secret India by Paul Brunton, Paul Brunton actually uh, has a whole chapter devoted, at least one chapter devoted to Mayor Baba. Mayor Baba um, did a lot of things. <laughs> He, he actually proclaimed himself to be the avatar of the age. This is a big claim, and it's not a claim that uh, most gurus make for themselves. Um, Mayor Baba did not also speak with words. He, he actually used um, an alphabet board uh, for, for most, for like 40 years. Uh, from the 1920s until when, when he passed. I believe it was in 69 that he passed. Um, he was one of the, the, the most vocal people against LSD and psychedelic drugs back in the 60s. And he wrote a pamphlet that got distributed in the early 60s called God in a Drug? Question mark. Um, and the pamphlet basically in the pamphlet he says that LSD is not only does not only not lead to enlightenment or anything spiritual, but LSD is actually harmful and dangerous. And I won't go into all of it. I, we maybe I'll do another video just on that subject of that pamphlet. Um, but that that pamphlet got around, and one of the people that either saw the pamphlet or heard about Mayor Baba was Ramdas, who was Dr. Richard Alpert. He, uh, he and Timothy Leary were famously or infamously forced to resign from Harvard. I believe that was in 61. Um, and they were, they had been studying psilocybin, um, testing it with, on doing research with graduate students at Harvard University. They were forced to resign and then they got introduced to LSD and they started using it. And at first, um, Dr. Alpert was very enthusiastic about LSD, just as many people were. But after a while, he started to have doubts. And, and one of his doubts was in regard to not it not being a stable thing. You know, you go up, you come back down, go up, you come back down. Um, and he so he started to think that people like Mayor Baba might know, know have the answer and, and know what the truth is. So he actually wrote a letter to Mayor Baba and there's some, there's correspondence. I wrote about all this in my, in my book. I wrote a book called, Who Am I? Yoga, Psychedelics and the Quest for Enlightenment. I'm gonna put the, the link to the book. It's on Amazon. I'm gonna put the link in the description. So check it out if you want. Um, I'm titling this video a, a response to Sadhguru because in my book, what I said was, who, who is there these days who will be the mayor Baba of this generation and, and make such a, such a statement? And Sadhguru is the guy, as far as I'm aware. He's, he's the one that is most well known now for making this public statement about ayahuasca and other psychedelics. And basically... He really puts it down. He, you know, he he acknowledges that there might be some, you know, you might have a nice experience. It might be a good purgative, you know, in terms of ayahuasca. He he's talking mainly about ayahuasca actually in his video. 
you know, because he's talking about the per, the purgative benefit of it. But beyond that, beyond the, the, the purgative benefit, he doesn't see much value. He doesn't see it. He he uses the term occult, that it, it um, gives you access to the occult, um, which is seems to be a pejorative term. Um, he makes another, uh, uh, you know, several other comments about it. But the, the main one, which has been made by many people for a long time, not just in the world of yoga, but just in regard to the issue of spirituality and psychedelics or spirituality and um, psychoactive substances. Maybe we'll say that psychoactive substances and spirituality. Is there any place for psychoactive substances in in on the spiritual path or spiritual journey? So I'm gonna just give my own little take. I don't think that that um, first of all, I don't think um, it seems from what. Sadhguru is saying, and someone out there can correct me, but it seems that Sadhguru does not have any experience himself. That's one thing. You know, he's not speaking from his own experience. He also um, kind of puts it down, and and I think that's 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 not a a uh, a wise thing to do in this day and age because it it becomes too much about. Um, kind of like cultural hegemony type of things where 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 now the you know the India and Hinduism has the right way and the south you know these south american tribes are living in the dark <laughs> i mean if you you could see it that way in, in how he's and how he poo-poos it now i think they took the comments down on his video but but I saw a lot of the original comments, and a lot of the comments were actually defending ayahuasca, which, which isn't hard to do because because really, Sadhguru did not make a very good case. Um, he did not bring in a lot of things that that people that actually have used ayahuasca know about, um, and psychedelics. So the first thing that I, I would say is for anyone out there is like, you can't really talk about psychedelics unless you have actually used them yourself. Um, that's one thing. <laughs> Second thing, um, uh, Sadhguru did not talk about Soma. He did not mention anything about Soma, which is in the Vedas. Soma was the substance. It, it was the, um, the elixir of immortality. The, it was this drink that that um, at least some of the of the ancients, maybe the rishis, maybe some rishis, <laughs> you know, the rishis are the sages, ancient Hindu sages. Maybe some of them drank it, and they and they attained immortality. Maybe they attained um, this understanding. Or, or self-realization through this substance called Soma. In, an, in another video I did, I, I mentioned how um, I went to see this guru who was, who was a follower of Sai Baba. He's still, probably still alive. He, he follower of Sai Baba, and he believed that Sai Baba, uh, who's a very controversial guru, but let's just say he's a follower of Sai Baba, and he became a Peruvian shaman. And he believed that Sai Baba led him to Peruvian shamanism. And I attended a couple of his ceremonies. And in his ceremonies, this particular guy does mantras to Sai Baba. Um, and his, his partner that I met is a follower of Muktananda. And, uh, and, and told me that Muktananda came to her in a dream. And, and put his blessing on ayahuasca. <laughs> this is all in my book. Um, and the other guy, um, who, the follower Sai Baba, told me that Soma, ayahuasca is Soma, that this is his understanding. So that's one thing that I want to bring up. I'm not, I don't have an agenda here. 
I, I, I'm really, you know, I wrote, I wrote the book as a freelance free agent. I, I, I parted my, I parted ways with, um, what I was doing originally, which was following certain teachers, which I, was very helpful to me in my twenties. But at a certain point I realized I needed to, um, take a step back or you might say, take a step forward. I don't know. <laughs> um, I, I believe it's all been for my, my greatest and highest good. And I, I do, you know, I just want to, to say, I don't, I really don't have an agenda. Am I biased? I'm a little bit biased and I'm trying to, I, I want to try to correct my bias. Here's my bias. My bias is I started doing yoga. I was again, I was completely against any kind of substances. And that's partly because what I was told, which is what Sadhguru was saying, which is you don't need anything. So my, my feeling still is, is that yes, you don't need anything. Why would you need anything? Why would you need something outside of yourself to, to, um, lift your spirits or bring you to spirit <laughs> or help you find spirit. Um, why would you need that? Why would anyone need, need that? Well, you know, why would we need it? Why, would, why do we need anything? You know, we're all here. We all are using different things to help us. You know, it's like, why do I need, um, why do I feel b better wearing nice clothes than, than wearing crappy clothes? Well, why do I feel better after I take a shower than not taking a shower? Or why do I feel better? You know, there's a lot of things you, you could you could say, you know, and and I would say for someone who, who uses ayahuasca and they feel better afterwards, that's not a small thing. I would I would say that that's a that's a wonderful thing. And maybe we need more of that. Now I, I do I wanna say that so my, my bias though, is that I facilitate ayahuasca ceremony. So I, I have to put that on the table, but I'm not, I'm still open to this question. And I, I also want to say, ultimately, I think that the wisdom of the ages is that, yes, you don't need anything. Why would you need anything? Why, why would you need anything to, to because it, it's all ultimately inside of yourself, you know, the joy, the peace, the love that you're seeking is all within you. That's great. <laughs> but most of us do not feel that, you know, and, 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 and what's, what's wrong with using a tool if it presents itself that can, can be helpful in that regard. And this is not to have the illusion that the thing itself is necessarily doing it or to get attached or addicted to the thing. First of all, ayahuasca is not addictive. Okay. LSD, the psychedelics are not addictive. Are they, do, do people de develop a dependency upon them? You could say that that's, that's another thing. And, and maybe there is somewhat of a, of a dependency thinking that you need those things in order to find peace or find joy or whatever you want to call it, you, you know, to find your, your center, to find your, uh, to lose your ego <laughs> and to be in your loving self once again. The, it, you can have a dependency. I just saw a post from a friend who, who, who mentioned that, 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 you know, he, he took a break from all substances and that's great. I, I think, for people that use substances all the time, I think now try something else. <laughs> now try no, no substances. And for those who don't use substances at all, it might be a good idea to try a substance. Um, and I know that people think, well, once you open that door, you can never go back. That's, that may be true, but maybe that's a good thing. You know, um, I, I tend to think there's a lot of judgment in all this. And I also and I also would say, you can always follow the paper trail. You know, the, <laughs> what 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 agenda do people have in saying one thing or the other? 
right? What, is, what agenda does Sadhguru have in, in saying what he's saying? I know that he is a man of, of, of peace and wisdom, and I, I'm not denying that. Um, but, but there may be a subtle agenda there and, and really a put down of, of, of probably the, the millions of people who have either tried or are using ayahuasca. Um, but he also is probably, his words probably had, um, meaning for even people that have used psychedelics and they're probably like, yeah, you know, you're right. <laughs> so I, I'm not putting him down. I, I also want to go back to the Vedas. I'm, I'm kind of rambling here, but let, let's also go back to the Vedas and the idea of paths are many, truth is one. So this is another thing I want to bring up, which is that I, I feel that the medicine path, what has been called the medicine path, is it's is a path in other words you could take ayahuasca repeatedly over time and it could it could eventually lead you to the highest goal and i believe that is the that is the import of ayahuasca that is what ayahuasca is there for is is to bring you to through all of your fear back to love again. That that's my understanding and I'm gonna that's my story and I'm I'm sticking to that. Um I'm not here to to put Sadgur down. I, I I I wanna I wanna give him the benefit of the doubt. And and I also want to say that I, I feel what he's saying ultimately is true. And I said this already in this talk, but but let's let's say it again. That, uh, the the purpose of ayahuasca is that you don't need ayahuasca anymore. But it, it might not just be as simple as doing it once. Not if you really want to understand it and you really want not only understand it, but work through your fear. It may take repeated sittings, repeated applications. It may take it may, it may take your whole life, just like yoga, you know, just like meditation. Meditation is not a one one shot deal either. You do it repeatedly over time. Um, there's so many things you could say in response to this, and that's why I'm I'm doing this video is to present an alternative, because if you just listen to Sadguru uh, or someone like him, it, it's it's a lot more black and white. But but I don't think it's it is so black and white. I think it's it's that that spirit meets us where we where wherever we are and it may be that a substance like ayahuasca presents itself to us at just the moment that we need it and and and, and if we go rather than feeling guilty about doing that or feeling bad about about using substances rather i feel that we can feel good about that and we we can not get into this guilt trip but say yeah all right i i'm i'm glad that i did that i'm glad that i that i that i had the courage to try ayahuasca or courage to try lsd the courage to try mushrooms it's not an easy thing and uh he also you know Sadhguru talks about you know it's not a shortcut it's a it's it's a long arduous process that's right it's not a it's it's a shortcut only in the sense that it can save you time. But it, the reality is, is that it's not an easy thing to do. Ayahuasca is not an easy thing to do. You have to, basically, you are, um, you are saying, I'm willing to step into the fire and, and really confront my fears. That is not at all easy. Confront my ego. I'm, I'm, I'm ready to, I'm ready to, to dissolve the ego you know I'm, I'm ready even to the point of ego death i'm ready to know god if you go in with that intention why wouldn't you you know you might just find it you know i want to know god i want to know who i really am who 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 or what i really am right um pete townsend <laughs> 
was was very much against substances himself, I believe because of Mayor Baba. But I'm just presenting an alternative. Um, and I'm, I'm speaking for the alternative here. But I'm also trying to find the middle ground. Which, I believe the middle ground here is to say that substances are not necessarily an end in themselves, but they're, they're, they're only a means to the greater end, which is self-realization, which is to know love again, to go home and, and, and to find that and to be able to live consistently from that place. Um, I think that's all I'm going to say for this moment. I've done about 20 minutes. I hope this wasn't rambling too much. I would love your comments, anything you want to share. Thank you so much for listening. Uh, and let me know if you want me to talk about anything more in any other videos. Thank you.